So this is actually really funny. You notice how, I mean, Devin Nunez is a just a horrible, just repulsive human being, in my opinion. Don't sue majority report, Congressman. Um, and he's been really touchy in these hearings on Ukraine. Let me just, uh, in the impeachment hearings, I'll just say, I, I, I think, you know, people kind of generally know that I sort of fall somewhere in the middle of this argument. I think some on the left who have a really important and urgent critique of the national security state want to talk about, in fact, why was there a transition from Obama uh, to Trump in terms of some kind of lethality of weapons uh, provided to Ukraine? I'm incredibly sympathetic to those arguments. And I absolutely think that this same... Uh, that, of course, uh, uh, you know, national security state or whatever you want to call it would absolutely be assembled against a, a president that wanted to actually shift U.S. foreign policy. And they would not wait till an actual act of corruption to do that. I mean, I'm sorry. I think that's just very naive. On the other hand, I think some people on the left are, you know, why would we give a pass to Donald Trump? I mean, this isn't like Russia. This isn't a convoluted thing with some things that are worth looking at. And but then also some unhinged conspiracy theories and a whole bunch of things. And we'll find out and this and that. This is the dudes made a call. We've read it. He held up aid for a political favor. That is. And even if you oppose the policy. Uh, that is a serious problem. Also, you have a president in Ukraine who has his own geopolitical uh, considerations. He's trying to actually have a rapprochement with Russia and tackle some of the domestic problems in Ukraine. He's got a lot of people he's got to please. And of course, he's not going to go up against the United States. And of course, also, even though what Trump did was transparently corrupt, uh, you know, the Biden story doesn't look great. In fact, Biden's story is a perfect example of the swamp. So, but what is really important about these impeachment hearings, I mean, what I think the politics remains to be seen, to be bluntly, to put it bluntly, I think we'll see. He's obviously not going to get removed from office. So the question is, is how much does it really, does it give him some body blows? That hasn't happened yet. I hope it will. I hope it does. What we already know that is great is that it's monopolizing a lot of their time and that keeps their energy away from all of the horrors that these people, that these, these, you know, I mean, the Miller story barely gets any attention there. I mean, you know, the, the, the just confirmation of this, you know, terroristic white supremacy at the center of this white house and party. So, that's important. That's monopolizing time. And then there's this ancillary benefit that Devin Nunez might be so touchy and weird at these hearings because he's directly involved in all of this nonsense shenanigans. This is Devin Nunez. Basically, what happened over the weekend was first Eric Swalwell basically put brought this up at the hearing like, hey, dude, are you involved in this personally? Then Lev Parnes, the lawyer, uh, uh, Lev Parnes's lawyer, who is the indicted businessman who was uh, involved, I believe, through Giuliani with all of this, um, he is willing to testify uh, that basically Victor Shokin, who was the prosecutor that was ousted at Biden's request, was ready to meet with Nunez in Vienna last year. Now, this goes back to Biden leaning on a prosecutor. Uh, to to get rid of a prosecutor and also uh and how that could relate to now again i keep wanting to draw the the distinction here the whole process is corrupt as hell and i don't think the united states should have the power over who ukraine has in a prosecutorial position now that said my understanding is that hunter biden was on the opposite side uh, in terms of the dirty people he was representing than the dirty prosecutor that his dad was going after. So it wasn't exactly synchronized. It's more just a multiverse of uh, dangerous U.S. foreign policy, uh, Russian meddling, Ukrainian problems across the board, and myriad different opportunities for corruption, some technically legal and some not. And then Donald Trump trying to use foreign aid illegally to get uh, political dirt 
on an opponent, which is, I think, frankly, probably five thousandth on the list of things he's done that bother me, to be honest with you. And I, I do raise my eyes at some of the smelling salts around this, but it is illegal and it is fucking transparent. It's right there. And now we have the very pleasant sight of it's also making Devin Nunez freaked out. Here he is talking about suing CNN, freaking out with Maria Bartiromo. Were you in Vienna with Shokin? Yeah, so look, Maria, uh, I really <laughs> want to answer all of Awesome. Already good. Were you in Vienna with Shokin? Yeah, so look, Maria, uh, <laughs> I really want to answer all of these questions. Uh, and I promise you I absolutely will come back on the show and answer these <laughs> questions. <laughs> but because there is criminal activity here, we're working with the appropriate law enforcement agencies. We're going to file all this. Everyone's going to know the truth. Everybody's going to know all the facts. But I think you can understand that I can't. It's going to be like the cow lawsuit uh, part two. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> to be fair, he is also suing a fictitious cow. So I'm not sure how much weight that carries. All the facts. But I think you can understand that I can't compete by trying to trying to debate this out with the public media right. when 90 percent of the media are totally corrupt and because <laughs> this is now all of a sudden we don't believe in debate anymore wow the graveyard of ideas uh, and because this is criminal in nature and because it's so bad it's so slanderous so bad, so uh, bad. we've got all the facts on our side oh, uh, and we're going to file in federal court <laughs> Uh, because I'm not going to sit here and try to, to compete against the media that I have no chance of, of winning with. Thank you. Uh, I will win in court, and they'll have a chance to cooperate, and uh, they'll have to, to to show how they work with somebody who's been indicted, uh, which is you know likely uh, conspiring to obstruct justice. So, here. so not I want to just denial. be, be hey, clear before I move justice. on. I got to get your take on the impeachment hearings, but but just to be clear, you're saying you're suing CNN, you're going to sue Daily Beast. You you I know you you sued Twitter. <laughs> sue in the everybody. Past. Do you think this is going somewhere? You're telling me that CNN committed criminal activity. Well, it's it's very likely. Uh, or they're or they're an accessory to it, right? So, so none of this is true. Sue everybody. That's what I said my statement is it's demonstrably false. We'll get to all the facts when it's filed in court. So you know, but somehow uh, you know they're either they're either witting or unwitting of listening to somebody who's been indicted, and no, and not only that, but it's their lawyers. So you're, you're talking about third and fourth hand hearsay. To do what? To to dirty up the leader of the Republicans on the Intelligence Committee that just destroyed their complete narrative that right. they've been pushing this new Ukraine uh, right. uh, yeah. hope that they've been pushing for the last two months. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, that just sweatily looked awkward and repeated a bunch of stories by Newsmax that everybody laughed at and yeah. didn't answer the opening question about from the segment about whether I'd met the person or not. That's hilarious. 